Hey everybody, welcome back. And welcome to episode one in our new series, Understanding Snake Behavior. Now, for those of you guys that follow us for any length of time, you know we spend a lot of time talking about reading behaviors, about how to react and respond to our animals, just so that we can have more comfortable, safer experiences working with them, especially when we're talking about our larger animals. Uh, very important for us to be on point and on top of our game when we're working with them. And now that we've got a couple, few hundred videos on the channel, I thought it was a good idea for us to start consolidating some certain topics into series like this to make it more accessible for folks, make it a little bit easier to find the help that we're looking for. Uh, and of course, we always encourage you guys, we've got a lot of good videos out there on handling, show some unique situations and stuff. By all means, get on and check that stuff out. But today we are gonna start our first episode in the series and our friend, Mr. Silent Bob, our Sri Lankan Python, who's not gonna face the camera for us, is gonna be out helping us today. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now, for those of you guys that don't know Mr. Silent Bob right here, he's a Sri Lankan python, as I said, and he is probably our most famous success story. We did an entire series on him, and I'm going to link that in the end screen so you guys can watch that if you like. It's a really good example of taking an animal that's really terrified of people, very difficult to handle, wants to fight, wants to bite, doesn't want anything to do with us, and turning them into a manageable animal like you see here. Um, you know, for any of us that keep these animals, yeah, it is, it's really important that we do our best to make them being kept as enjoyable as it can be for them. And of course, we don't want to be afraid of them. So it's really important that we devote some time to understanding them. That's the key to being able to enjoy keeping them and not have to worry about things like getting bit and musked on, stuff like that. And of course, guys, as within all my videos, the link for usarc.org is down in the description. I strongly encourage you guys, if you are members of USARC, make sure you're checking in with them periodically or check in with me every Saturday at 7 when we go over our recent USARC alerts and anything that may require our attention. If you're not familiar with USARC, again, go down in the description. The link's right there. Click on it. Look at it. We really need people to be involved and get your memberships, get involved with the legislation and stuff like that just coming out. It's really important and they are the most instrumental tool the reptile community has uh, to ensure that we're able to keep our animals and keep interacting and keep enjoying them the same way we always have. So of course in this video, this is an introduction, we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going to be going in the next follow-up episodes. And this time we're going to be talking specifically about what our goal is. When we're we're working on taming or socializing or whatever whatever verbiage you want to use for it um, and, and building that relationship with our animals now you may have heard me say before that our goal is to get our animals to behave the same way they will in the wild now when we think of wild behaviors we automatically think of if you're associating it with a wild caught snake you're thinking of a snake that's going to be fighting biting and musking and just terrified of you. Well, <clears throat> yes and no. You know, an animal's natural behavior in the wild when they're not under duress is much different than a wild animal's demeanor when they're under duress. And one thing that puts them in duress is the fact that they innately know human beings are cruel, dangerous animals that need to be avoided. So when they see us, they either run or they get ready to fight most of the time. Um, and you'll see this just about any animal that you go out and you interact with. You know, it's really obvious with a lot of birds. Um, you go out in your backyard, you can watch a bird just kind of buzzing around and doing his thing and hopping around branch to branch. But as soon as you start to get close to them, they see you, they recognize you as a threat and they're gone. Um, same thing with when you walk up on a wild snake, more often than not, you know, once that animal sees you, it's either going to try and slither off into the grass and just avoid you entirely, or it's going to feel like it can't escape and it needs to fight. Uh, so that's the behavior 
that we try to avoid. Um, when you watch these animals in the wild, they are very calm, they are very at peace, they're very at ease. If there's not any sense of a predator, a threat around, um, or if they're not actively engaged in hunting, particularly snakes, you know, they are really docile animals. That's their natural state of being. Their natural state is inquisitive, solitary. Um, you'll see them on a regular basis, just kind of cruising around, exploring, looking for a place to den up, looking for a place to warm up. They focus on maintaining their balance. Um, and if you really watch their behavior in regards to their temperature regulation, uh, you'll see what I'm you'll see what I'm talking about. You know, snakes have got a certain temperature range that they're comfortable in, and a lot of times, if you see them moving around, they're just working to find that balance between their environment and their body temperature. They want to find just that right spot, and it, it's a really relaxed demeanor that they've got. Um, that's the same thing that we want to achieve when we bring them into captivity. Um, when you bring a wild snake in. They're terrified of people, just like little Bob was here. My very first time handling him, probably my first three times handling him, terrified. As soon as I go in there, he'd start striking and biting and musking and everything that he could think of to save his own life because he saw me as a threat. Now, under normal circumstances, you're not going to just walk out in the yard and see one of these animals flailing around like that because it's not their natural state. So the first part to understanding snake behavior is to understanding what their natural state is going to be. And now that we've talked about that a little bit, you know, we can talk more about our goal being to <laughs> get them to cooperate just a little bit when they're out. At least he's not biting me anymore. So that says something. But our goal is to allow our animals to not fall off of our backs, there we go, um, is to allow them to feel comfortable just like they would out in the wild and do that while we're handling them. Do that while they're crawling all over us and stuff like that. Um, that's the state that they're the most comfortable in. So that's what we want to help them do. So the way that we do that is by observing them in the wild, observing their behavior in captivity, and trying to get inside their heads and determine what it is that they're thinking. Now, you'll hear different opinions about what capacity for thought snakes have. Uh, I happen to think that it's pretty high, especially in your larger snakes. Uh, my reticulated pythons are, are really keen in a lot of respects. And at this point, having had them long enough, it, it's fairly easy for me to look at them and kind of figure out what state of mind they're in. There's going to be four main, I'm going to say five main um, categories that you're going to be able to classify this, the state that a snake's in. They're either sleeping, of course, which can be difficult to determine on an animal that doesn't have any eyelids, or they're going to be in food mode, actively pursuing a meal. They're going to be defensive or frightened or ready to defend themselves and so forth. Uh, or they're going to be in thinking, exploration mode. That's the mode that we talk about when we talk about an animal that's kind of moving through its environment, trying to find that temperature balance and so forth, really relaxed. They're not under duress, they're not hunting. They're just really chilled out. That's the state that we want to interact with our animals in. And part of the whole process of being able to recognize their behavior is that's the only way we're going to know when we've helped them achieve that thinking comfortable state, uh, the state that we want to work with them in. And the other, the other mode that you may find them in is a breeding room, breeding mode. And you'll find, as in with most animals, the uh, breeding behaviors can vary. A lot of animals get really aggressive around breeding time, uh, and snakes are not immune to that either. Uh, you'll see it's it's particularly noticeable like in male retics and things like that. Snakes that are really athletic and reactive to begin with, uh, when they get into that breeding aggression, uh, it can be really frightening. So again, this is what this series is going to be addressing. Now that we've identified the fact that our animals are naturally pretty calm creatures, 
And the only time they really get disrupted is when we bring them into captivity. Now we can look into exploring more specifics on how we recognize their body language, um, what it is that they're telling us. And we'll also talk about some methods that we can use to help change their frame of mind. And this is something that we talk about all the time when we talk about tap training and things like that. If a snake is in a, has a hot food response, we'll go in with the hook, we'll tap them a little bit, we'll let them know that it's not feeding time. And we look to change that frame of mind that they've got from, I wanna eat, I wanna eat, to, oh, okay, cool, yeah, we're jumping out of the enclosure. This is my person, it's not a meal. And we're going to avoid many, many bad incidents. Uh, I'm gonna avoid getting bit, any number of things that are associated with misreading our animals. So as we progress through this, in the end screens of the videos, I'll have a link to the series, I'll have a link to the next video as they come out, and then I'll have a link to the previous video in here. Now on this one, just for the sake of conversation, since we've got little Bob out here, I'm gonna link the series on the Sri Lankan in the end screen, so you can kind of see, clearly see firsthand how we take an animal that's extremely defensive, ex extremely scared, and work with him, uh, get him comfortable, and get him to the point where he understands that he can trust me, and I can now trust him, and we can interact peacefully and have a great time. Now, if you aren't currently subscribed to the channel, strongly encourage you to get down, hit the subscription, click the notification bell, because you'll definitely want to follow along with this series. We'll go into a lot of detail about these topics, and hopefully it will help a lot of people have just better experiences overall, from their little ball pythons all the way up to their 20-foot retics, just having a little better understanding of how they think and what they need so that we can more comfortably interact with them. And we have also got our Patreon page. We've got some great supporters on there. It's continuing to grow. We do a Zoom call after every one of our live streams on Saturday, which happens at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock is the YouTube live. Immediately after that, right around 8.30 is when we do our um, Zoom meetups for all of our contributing Patreon members. And we've got a lot of knowledge in there. We've got a lot of folks with some really great animals. Definitely encourage you to jump on board there, especially since we don't do any breeding or selling or anything like that here. It's all educational work. We lean pretty heavily on our Patreon community and they're awesome. And we've also started a Discord. And that I started the Discord with the mindset of having it for the paid Patreon supporters. I'm gonna expand that out to um, one open discord for like channel subscribers and then we'll have a couple different groups in there for like patreon and, and so forth so we're working on expanding a few things it's very busy around here we've got a lot of irons in the fire but um we're still doing our best to keep up with everybody out there so don't forget jump down get subscribed we will be putting out one of these videos in the series weekly and hopefully by the end of it We've got one place where you guys can come and have all your questions answered about snake behavior and how we can have better relationships with them. So you guys have an outstanding rest of the day. Have an outstanding safe weekend. Be careful of the heat out there, guys. Drink water and make sure your air conditioning is serviced and up to date. Oh, ours was out for two days. It was rough with the animals. So have an outstanding day and we'll see you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.